Hot summer makes me want to eat spicy curry. Today, I'd like to introduce you to a new kind of curry that is a little different from the usual Japanese standard curry. First, I'll introduce the butter chicken curry, which is very popular in Japan. This is a very quick method that requires no preparation and is perfect for busy people. First, chop the onion. The trick is to use plenty of garlic. Chop this into small pieces as well. As the name butter chicken suggests, it uses a lot of butter. Place the garlic in a deep fry pan with the butter and melt the butter. When the garlic has a nice aroma, add onions. Fry over medium heat for about 10 minutes. Make space in the pan for the chicken. You can use any part of the chicken you like. Lightly sprinkle the chicken with salt and pepper. When the surface of the chicken has changed color, combine it with the onions. And add the canned tomatoes. Mash the tomatoes and mix well. Add heavy cream here. And also add the curry roux. Today I'm making curry for two people, so I will put in two curry roux. I always use java curry. Any brand of Japanese curry roux will do. Curry roux is very convenient because it already contains various seasonings. Please check my blog for detailed ingredients and quantities. To make it a little richer, add a little ketchup. Stir until the curry roux is thoroughly dissolved. Then simmer over low heat for 10 minutes. A little miso paste is added at the end to enhance the flavor. Taste and adjust the amount to your liking. I wanted to add a little more mellowness, so I added milk. You can have this added at the same time as the heavy cream. Mix well while dissolving miso through re. Cook for 1-2 to two minutes and it's done. Today, I'll serve the rice in a pretty way like this to create a slightly different curry. The butter and heavy cream made for a really rich and tasty curry. I usually make curry with pork, but chicken is still delicious and even better when made into butter chicken curry. Next, I'll make a refreshing curry with shrimp. The flavor of the shrimp and the spices are a perfect match and you will find a truly delicious new curry. First, shell the shrimp, remove the tails and remove the back of the shrimp. Cook those in a pan with a little oil. Season lightly with salt and pepper and garlic powder. Even if it's not fully cooked, it's okay because it will be lightly simmered later. Remove the almost cooked shrimp from the pan. This time use fresh tomatoes instead of canned tomatoes. Peel the tomatoes in advance. Make a slit with a knife like this. Then place in boiling water for about 1 minute. The skin is coming off. I always peel tomatoes this way. How do you peel the skin? If you have a better way, please let me know. Tomatoes should be about this size. It can be smaller. Onions are essential for making curry. Chop them into small pieces. In this case, garlic and ginger are used. Use slightly more ginger than garlic. It's good to add ginger for a refreshing taste. 
This time use less butter and add some oil. Use any oil you like. Once the butter is melted, add the onions. Fried onions are a little longer than in the first recipe. It may taste better if you fry them until they are candy brown. But I don't wait in other spices when they look like this. Today's spices are SB curry powder, cumin powder, and garam masala powder. Garam masala contains mainly these spices. Substitute your own spices. Mix onions and spice as well. Add the tomatoes you just chopped. A large amount of water will be released from these tomatoes, which will be simmered. Add sugar, ketchup, soy sauce, and white wine. Red wine is good too. Crush the tomatoes. Stirring occasionally, simmer on low heat until it's reduced. Unlike curry roux, curry powder contains no salt, so the trick is to salt it well. Add salt a little at a time, tasting as you go. After tasting it, I wanted to add a little richness, so I added a little butter. In total, I added about 1 teaspoon of salt. If you put quite a bit of salt on the shrimp, you may want to reduce the salt in the curry a little. Finally, return the shrimp to the pan. And cook for 1-2 to two minutes. When the curry has thickened to this degree, it's done. Topped with basil. Basil can be added when simmering. Since no meat is used, this curry is healthy. It turned out to be just as satisfying as a curry made with meat. Please give it a try. Thank you so much for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel. If you are already a subscriber and would like to support our channel, please join our membership. Membership feedback will be reflected in content creation. See you in the next video.